So you can see here at Holcott, it's a traditional gravel pit. Um, very, very clear water. Very well renowned for big carp. And they have a tench lake at the end of the main lake, what I call the main carp lake. Um, and you can see there's plenty of water for everybody to go at. Lots and lots of it. And plenty of rud as well. When it's a hot, still summer evening, late afternoon. You can often see them sort of bow waving around in corners. You can see them there, like a whole shoal of them. Some of these are quite big. I don't know. I think how big I had them there. It's about under a pound, I think. I did have some good ones, but there could be a lot bigger rud in there. It's a sort of nobody really knows because it's a carp water. And here is what type of a dragonfly is. It's a twin wing special, I'm calling that one. Anybody know what particular type it is? Being a gravel pit, up in this area, it is very clear, as you can see. Now that obviously encourages weed growth, so you're going to get plenty of weed up there with the sun going through the water. And some of those clear patches, I often wonder, are they cleared by the by the big carp there? They've got a tackle shop, a little tackle shop there. You can get baits and stuff, so let's have a chat with Les while we're there. Yeah, we do a, uh, a tackle run um, with a quad and trailer, so um, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a trek to the lake, so uh, it's always worth um, chucking the gear on and, and getting it carted around for, for a small fee, but yeah. Now they can book that then, can they? No, just uh, come and find me on the day, Yeah. and uh, yeah. Are you, are, you here, you are you here most days then? Monday to Friday, Monday to four. Now, do they obviously do these delivery at the weekend as well? Yes, yeah, weekends as well. There's an on-site bailiff um, every weekend, so... Yeah, fingers get, crossed. Get you yeah. Squared away. Lovely job. Thank you very much. <laughs> there are a huge number of big carp up at Hawcott, twenties, thirties, and I think forties. There's some incredible lumps up there if you have the patience to fish for them. And uh, I've already been in tackle shop and yes I have taken advantage of Les with his tackle delivery service because it's a reasonable walk. I could put all my gear on a barrow but you know <laughs> it's, it's there. It's a buggy with a very very large trailer on the back. So this one, when I'm walking at the moment I have never walked through this way before. So he said I go through here, I forgot directions already, he said I'd bear right in the woodland and I'll come out in an area called the beach. But as you can see, it's not an unpleasant walk anyway through the woods. The guys last night I've just been talking to in the, uh, calling it the carp area, there's carp everywhere here. Up by the car park, he had, I think he said he had two twenties last night, or early morning, and uh, pulled the hook on two others. So they're all keen for tonight. Ah, oh, bare right, he said. There's a high road and a low road, and I'm taking the high road, people. Look at that. Up there, I think really Mike should be down here doing a bushcraft session and I should be doing a fishing for carp or tench session. I thought I wouldn't mind one of the big bream in the, uh, in the main lake, I have to say. The thing is, like you know, I just go fishing. If a big fish comes along, great. I don't go targeting big fish because you spend an awful lot of time and get a huge amount of disappointment when you don't get what you think you're owed. Oh no, sir. It's another fork in the road. Oh well. If they find my body in the future, you'll know that uh, I've got lost somewhere around the lakes. No, it's not this one, it's a dead end. But check out that for a setting. I've got weed there, you find the pockets of weed, the gravel bars. Oh my god, is that a carp going along there? Just down there. Wow, I mean that's a setting, is it not? And look at the swim. This is your swim. Peace and quiet and solitude. Whew, that is so hot today, but I am here, guys, not for the carp. In fact, I've never done a carp session here. Don't think, anyway. Um, I've never caught a carp here, put it like that. I'm going to uh, have a go found the tench. Tench lake's at the other end of the fishery. Hence the requirement of that uh, Leslie's buggy. So just coming out and here's the tench lake, people. Oh, 
quite a bit of weed in the middle. There's more weed than I've seen before. Look at all that lovely gravel down there. Oh my God. I imagine the tension going to be in the weed beds. Now, what do you call these people? A wild rose or is that a dog rose? Experts out there tell me. Look at these. Beautiful. Just growing wild. Now I'm catching Les out now. Just check this swim out. I said to Les, a lot of this weed was sort of moving now, but it seems attached to the bottom. Maybe, I don't know, you see, this is what I saw. What do I know? It's a lovely spot though. It's, I've got these down my way, unfortunately, so it's a hour and a half journey, but it is what it is. There'll be a hundred anglers around here down my way. It looks very shallow out there, and I can imagine a lot of tension in the weed at the present time. Well, people, I've got the glasses on, because as soon as we go, yeah, let's just go in. There's a tench. <laughs> There's a tench. <laughs> There's a tench. I can't see him. A, age and eyesight, and B, no glasses. I've got the glasses now, and I have seen one or two fish move. Now, chances are, 10 past two in the afternoon on a hot, blazing day, I'm probably not going to get anything until this evening. But I'm going to get some bait in there, and then I'm going to get set up here, and fingers crossed I get a chance to pick something up. I'm going for swim feeder first. I've got worm, I've got sweet corn, I've got maggots, red and white. Um, I've got some little pop uppy, top uppy things, or whatever they call them, whether I use them, I don't know. I've always done quite well with combo baits of, uh, you know, sweet corn and worm, sweet corn and maggots, generally sweet corn and worm. Well, um, the whole lake, there's nobody here, I cannot believe it. Two guys just packed up, I talked to them up in the car park, and they got a few tents as well. He was saying, right in the margins on mussel. That sort of old school bait. I guess freshwater mussel, I don't know, or is it cockles, mussels, seafood baits, which I know they like as well. So, give me five minutes to get set up, and I'm gonna chuck some ground bait out and see what comes along. So you wanna know what we're using? I'm using, I wanted some fine ground bait, and I've used it all up. So I've had to use my stuff here, which is a, a load of brand, a load of that Bailey's number one. But into that, and that goes pretty stodgy, so they they need new teeth to get through this stuff. And into that, I'm going to put sweet corn. Yes, the cheapest I could buy. Get another sweet corn in there. Just frozen ones, I find it's better. Don't bother with tin stuff anymore. There, maggots, let's get those in. I've got some maggots in red and white. Give them a dollop of those. I've got to keep these cool somehow, they're very hot. Notice I've just thrown two maggots into my uh, bed area. Oh, three. There's another one jumped out. It'll wake me up at night. It said it might be a few mozzies here. I've got in here, let's have a look. I've soaked these pellets. Now, you're supposed to pump them, apparently. I don't know whether they... I've just soaked them. I put hot water in there first and left them soaking over it. So they're all going in as well. Not all of them, obviously. They are the same as these. They're the same as those. They have a nice smell, these, I have to say. I've got two sides, I've got fours and sixes in there. Then, the pH de resistance. Resistance, ah, oh, the pH de resistance. Is the old CC more Pacific tuners. These are six mils. And I've got these more for the smell than anything. I've not used these other than for feeder, I don't think. But there you go, there. They're the CC more Pacific tuners. Lovely smell, lovely smell. Let's get a few of those in there as well. That can get them something to be digging around with. So, they've got an absolute mishmash of bait there to be getting on with. Also, I'm gonna throw some balls in really close and see what comes along. Let's get this damped up. Now that's going to take a while to sort of what I call set up, if you like, just to get... I think it's the horse feed, the Bailey's horse feed, 
it takes just to take a while to bind up a little bit to give you a throw in. So I'm letting that soak and letting it all bind together a bit. I'm going to throw a couple of balls just down here close. Basically to see what comes in. Whether they get loads of uh, small fish, but occasionally you will get fish come right in close, mega close. I've been looking at both swims, that one and this one. Sort of that looks a nicer flow fishing swim. I see a feed that's up in the tree there hanging. So people have been fishing here and it seems quite clear out there. I can actually see the clear bottom, so I figure I'll just fish a, a balled up area. And rather than me chasing the fish over there, which I can see, I'm going to bait up in there and let them come to me. Um, so that's where I'm going to feed up out there. This is my six pound maxima straight through. I've got one of those grips hooks there for people who are all in the tackle. There's one of those grips hooks. But because I'm using worms and maggots live bait, um, possibly corner stay, they'll stay on a barbless hook. But I put a little rubber stop over the top. You've probably seen it before when I've done it. Um, the weirdest swim feeders, I don't even know somebody gave them to me. But they're, they're like sort of rough. I don't know where. It looks like a lobster part. It looks like a mini, mini lobster. So I'm wondering, it's not open at the bottom so I'm going to pile a load of maggots in there and cap it off at the top with some ground bait so the maggots will work out through the holes um, I've got a, instead of a, a shot to stop here as you can see I've got a little bit of valve rubber float valve rubber to cushion against this swivel I don't want to put a split shot because if this weeds around and the split shot jams it might slide all the way down so I've got that as a little cushion you know for casting and also this must just come with this. It's, it's a little bit of giving. It's like an elastic stretch to it, like silicon, I guess. Um, so maybe they are shot bought a tiny, tiny feeder, which that would jam into the eye of this feeder. That's why I've got that little piece of a blue um, valve rubber there. So I'll show you what it looks, looks like before I put it on and before I cast it out. That sounded stupid, Graham. How can I show it to them before I put it on? Get a brain, it's the sea, it's the sun, it's too much sun. I did see one swim feeder rig up the tree, got quite a long hook link on it. Is it a helicopter rig, that one? Somebody tell us, that angled piece of boom. Didn't do the guy any good because it's up the tree, he won't get much, catch much up there. What I intend doing is bunging the maggots in like this, plugging the end up like here with some ground bait. Now if you watch, look. Those maggots don't take long to actually come out through the holes, depending obviously how hard I pack in the ground bait to hold it. And of course the ground bait will dissolve in the water as well. You can see these, look, if I hold it like that, one, two, three, four, five. I'm not counting them all, no, but you got the you had the principle. So these now, as they're wriggling off my hand, will be wriggling away from the feeder and radiating out in the water and hopefully they get to my hook bait and around there and if the tents come along picking up these loose fed maggots that are wriggled out before they drown then um, he might stumble across my bait which is going to be worm a dendrobina worm which is the classic I've got it in here with my milk for tomorrow and some three cool box it's dendrobina whatever it says eight worms, so who knows what's in there. There ain't going to be many. A reasonable size worm. But I can see I've got to keep everything cool in this weather. Now these would wriggle off of here, right? So, I don't know if you're going to see this. I'll go through once, pop it up over the eye of the hook, go through twice. It's just my way of doing it. I pop that over the hook. And then again, about a third of the way down. Now by not threading out the hook as we do with sea baits, I've got wiggling at the top end there, I've got wiggling at the bottom end, and hopefully Mr. Tench comes along and picks that up. And now what you can do in the daytime, as it's still daylight, just put a couple of white maggots on there. That's what I call, I go thin in first, just purely because it doesn't block the bend of the hook, okay? So it's a little target as well during the day, like that, that might, makes no difference at night, of course it doesn't, but it might just make a difference during the day. And I'll get a rubber band, a section of a rubber band I should say, and just pop it over 
Now, if you can see that, the rubber band, two maggots and the worm. And that stops the worms and maggots riding off the point of the hook. All it remains now is to fill this chappy up, cap it off with some ground bait, and throw it out there. What I'm going to do also is keep my thumb on that while I lob it out, otherwise it's going to the, the pressure of the mags expanding and the you know, wriggling will break it apart. All clear for casting. I'm going to try right over there if I can. That will do nicely as the actress said. Try and sing this. Now I've got to give you a tip in a minute about sinking line. I didn't actually do it then, I forgot all about it. My keenness to get the bait out. I bump it once, that's all I do. I put it into the bank rest, make the adjustment on the back so I raise it like this. That way I get the least amount of resistance going down through the rod rings out there. Put on the uh, noise maker. There. I'm going to put this ring over the other side there because I'm going to put a bob in here. Now, to me it makes more of an acute angle down here and you get a more sensitive bite. So I'm going to get one of my bobbins on there. Immediately I put it on back wine which means it can go forwards or backwards in case I actually get a take while I'm getting the bobbin. All right, I'm going to be using one of these. If you can see those there, that's my white painted hair grips you can see look the claw they're dead easy you just squeeze them apart over the line like this i missed it that time over the line and then i can either adjust from the back of my reel to where i want it one thing i should have checked was the drag which is a tad light That one there, folks, is all set up. And the other one, I'll probably do the same and cast it over to the main baited area. I mean, look, as far as I can see, it's just white ground bait out there. I can't see any fish at all. They were moving through that tiny gap in the weed back there, but probably going to spook them. So I'll just have to sit and wait for a few hours till the light goes down. Once this sun goes behind the trees over there, this will throw a shadow line here and you can see down here there's a shadow line that's going to creep out creep out creep out and hopefully they'll come in actually tell a lie i feel there is one shape down there that could possibly be a tension that's actually crept in so folks i'm all set up well i haven't got my other rod up just cast that one out got the bivvy up i wasn't going to have the bivvy we never had bivvies years ago we just had an umbrella when we went tent fishing fished all night if we got damp or rain we used to drape a piece of old plastic over it same sort of thing but of course we didn't have bed chairs oh no we just sat in the chair we might have dozed off years ago i'm talking 50 60 years ago we used to doze off but very often you didn't even need it but we've all we've all wimped out now and got these i kept that because uh les did say i might get eaten alive there might just be a skeleton in the morning because there's quite a lot of mozzies right second one out graham stopped talking I had just uh, one pull up there, probably a perch on the worm, because when I wound it, there's nothing there. I did strike, nothing there. So it's a little perch like this, tugging on the worms, always a downside of worms. The fish I have seen over there, have now since gone, since I heaved all the food in. But one little tip I did want to show you is, forgot to do it casting out, but to get your line to sink when it's slick like this, with little bits of weed on the surface, or leaves even, and you want to get through the surface film, I just used to take a little bit of washing up liquid in a little perfume jar, I think a little plastic thing you could squirt. And if you get this, and just before you um, cast out, just dribble, look, just that. That's all you need before you cast out, but with a spray. 
and that will then sink that line straight away and you don't get it curving off like you know, picking all lips of lead, bits of weed up and leaving you potentially with a, a false bite area. So I just brought some with me because I did think like this midsummer there's going to be weed. Indeed there's a lot of this weed. I did try a feeder and leave it just on the end of the line cast out across those two bits there which were really annoying me trying to pull them in. I have pulled some in as you can see here. It's this stuff. It's this stuff. But apparently it grows up and then dies and goes flat. But it's still like annoying because I don't want to lose attention if I do hook one up. On the bait inside, nothing. I've baited one, two, three balls just close in. And there's not a lot of small fish in there. So they haven't nibbled them away. So it tells me I don't have to um, leave too much time between um, baiting up there, really. Well, I've been here about two hours. I've had a bait in the water, I guess. Just, yes. I would say a couple of hours and nothing, absolutely nothing, two little tweaks. I'm sure they're baby perch. I saw I'm not happy about those feeders. I'm looking at them. And I'm thinking when I bring them in, they're not really emptying properly. So I wonder if they're river feeders. Any of you guys know out there? In other words, the maggots go out that way because when I wind this in, any ground bait, unlike an open-ended feeder, where it's open this end and that end, when you wind in, it pulls out, all the ground bait pours out. So it comes, but should come back empty. It tells you what mix you've made, whether it's too stiff, it's jammed up, or whether it's too loose, it's empty. But if I want it to come out, I want it to come out in the swim, you know, to keep the fish there when I wind in for another cast. This way I'm getting some come back at the bottom. So is that, yes, I think it's just for rivers. What do you guys think? The lobster hot feeders, are they for rivers only? I'm gonna, I'm thinking about it, I sat here thinking, not because I'm not catching a thing, well, partly that, but I just think I'll go back and try and see if I've got a couple of open-ended feeders in the tackle box and, and switch over. I've just dropped mine and look. <laughs> Lucky Luciani, they call me. <laughs> I love it. So, I've got rid of these two feeders, which I think might be the other ones. I looked out at my feet, whether this is the guys last night, I don't know. That you can put a big ball of ground bait around. It's got, it looks like a stone or something in there. See it? I've never seen these before. Well, it's hardly likely I'm ever going to see it because I never ever go into tackle shops, do I? So I don't know what the latest and greatest fashion icon is. Is it a broken piece of stone? Does anybody know? All I know is it's free. This is better than my beach fishing trips when I go down Lillstock and come back with six leads and no fish. I feel. That's for putting a big ball of ground bait around, and I don't think I need that. A, nothing is out there that's eating my ground bait yet, and B, I've already put some out there by those big balls, so I figure that's defeating the object. I just need open-end feeder. But happy days for being able to find something. Yes, free. It is 20 past six. The bobbins have not moved. I haven't seen any bubbles, blows, swirls, tail slapping, anything. I'm on a sweet corn and maggot combo on both of those, purely because there's not many worms in that tub I bought. I don't know how many they give you, but it ain't many. And I want to put the worms out probably through the night. And bear in mind, this time of uh, the year, it's not dark till about quarter past 10, and then it's light about 3.34. So there's not a lot of hours of darkness. It's just my personal thing. I don't want to waste the worms on, you know, tiny little perch like that. Should be on sweet corn, but the lake just looks very, very dead. Well, there's going to be storms. It's, it's, it's clouded over tomorrow. Wait, this is in London. They said it's going to be 34 degrees. Here it's about 26, I think, driving along in the car. Is it too hot for them? I don't know. It's looking quite cosy in here, though. <laughs> you just need that first fish, don't you? You just absolutely need to get that first fish for the confidence factor. And this can be beach, boat, anything. you just got to get that bite to let you know. Even a good bite, not just beep, one little four-inch perch tugging at a worm. It needs to be beep, 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 something, or a bit of activity. Hopefully, it will come. Other than that, the highlight of the evening looks like being the cook-up. You guys won't see it, but the balls of ground that I put in like th three and a half hours ago, they've just broken up, but they're just still there. I don't think you'll see them. 
just down there there's a white ball of ground bait not touched I don't know here it's just there's one down there it's crumbled up I can see all the sweet corn down there nothing I'm just trying to get pictures of fish at cruising because in the big lake I remember one time I did a, had a really really good uh, tench session in the big lake it's one of our films is up there and I put a couple of balls of ground bait and then during the night I just thought I wonder what's there and I got the floodlight and went holy cow there's tench to about six pounds there amazing how they came in that close but they will do once it gets dark all right there what much nothing thanks for asking <laughs> just what i wound in i got a ball of ground bait down there i don't think you'll see that either it is right down there you won't see it next to a clear patch of gravel um but let's did say this end well there's a nice swim here it's very shallow. I can see lots of little perch here, like four inches long. And obviously they're loving the worms. They're just zooming along their shoulder of them. Other than that, Zipperini. I've got one more place to check further up. I put one in here, I thought it'd be good. I'll see if I can get as close as I can. It's just down there. It's just broken up, the corn's there. Nothing. I just find it interesting, even doing it carpet. It's amazing how some, sometimes you can walk along and see fish. And there's a ball down there. One perch just swam over it about three inches long. But let's get the rods out again. I think I have to put a worm on now. So we're getting towards seven o'clock. To push the boat out, or rather, push the worm out. Well, there is not a breath of wind. It looks exquisite, except there's not a single bubble movement, anything. So, the highlight of the evening looks like being, yes, spag bowl. It is half past seven. I feel I might as well die, and I've got a magpie up there. Keeping me company, hopefully he's not going to be there too long. Otherwise he might get a high velocity boily. So, I don't know what to say. I don't think I've known it uh, like this. Well, I have known it for tents like this, but having seen them, you know, in the swim, I don't feel inclined to bung any more bait in there. I will, just as it gets dark, say quarter past ten, just as the light goes. Otherwise... Monsieur Le Swan is going to be over here and getting his neck down it and his beak into the trough. And it's relatively shallow, so he's going to disturb all the fish as well as eat the bait for the morning. So I'm going to have this with some melted cheese and a kielbasa roll. I've forgotten the beer. All I have is water. Oh, dear. Not a bad view. I could be at home working. The phone is off. I've already spoke to the wife. The phone is OFF. Clouded over perfectly. And also there's just falling off a full, full moon, just coming off a full moon. Should be shark fishing, really. Spring tides. I'm beach fishing next week. Anyway, I've got a couple of days away. I'm going to give it a go. Struggle again with that aspect. Also rigged up a float rod for the morning. <laughs> Don't know that's going to get used, but you never know on one of these close-in swims. But uh, that's what I put the bait in there for. So it costs nothing. It's just a handful of bait. The swan's already nailed one lot, so that's gone. But the others, oh, I've just seen. I've just seen in that weed a fish roll. And apparently there's not many carp in here, so I figure it might be a tension sort of did that oily roll they do. Maybe it's all gonna come good in the end. A bit like my spag bar. Well it might not be the height of culinary delight, but it's more like culinary carnage. It is at least 
edible and hot. So, serving time. I've even bought a napkin, a clean plate. Mike got me this set, but it's a small plate, really. And what I do, put it in a bait tin. You obviously gather them not too too fussy an eater. I'll get my grated cheese, just sprinkle lightly over the get out there. Spread with the maggot covered fingers, decorating it as best possible. Pieces of worm from the fingernails, that all goes in as well. And then having reached scalding point, uh, scrape off a few inches of or millimeters of Teflon and pour over the cheese. The temperature of the spaghetti bolognese shall, I hope, melt the cheese, possibly sticking everything to the non-stick pan and plate, and when cool enough to melt the moustache, will be in fact edible and keep me alive, hopefully, till the morning. Yummy. I think the rats have already been at this one. A Kia batter to go with it to mop up the juice and leftovers. Well, there won't be any leftovers. Mmm. Very bad news for didn't a beer. Well, I've checked the other swims. It's now about half past nine. I've put six balls of ground bait in. I've gone on three grains of sweet corn just to get rid of those little tweaky bites, which has worked. I've seen two. I've seen one, one tail of a tench come up right in the weed, and I've seen that oily roll where they come up and they just sort of go down really slowly right on the edge of the weed. And I'm seeing now, at long last, some bubbles coming up. And they're going from that weed across this way into, hopefully, my swim. It looks a lot lighter than it actually is. And they're coming from there where that um, moorhen is. And they've moved across to the left. There's bubbles just behind the moorhen in that channel. And that's why I figure they're coming through that channel and round. And maybe out of those two wee beds. I don't think they'd be in that wee bed. It's pretty well choked as a, a moorhen or a coot or a nest. So it's almost dry. But that stuff, they could be coming in between. Amazing, it just takes that one, obviously it takes these things to go off first, but at least that's two pointers, the traditional oily rolling of a green body tench as it comes up right through the weed there, and then the trail of bubbles moving into where my baited area is. So, although I'm very, very surprised of not having a take, it might be a question of dark. Here's what I was telling you about not sinking the line. You will get a build-up of pieces of blossom or leaves on there. It puts a belly in the line and will give you a full spite on the bobbins. So sink that line.
Well, you save the blank, but it is what I thought they would be. Small perch, which I've seen close in. This one's a little bit bigger. Obviously he's toasted the uh, maggots, bunch of maggots straight down the hatch. I'll probably go to double sweet corn with some maggots to try and get rid of these guys so I don't need them keeping me awake all night. Here's what I'm looking for, that's what I'm talking about. All tench anglers know those are tench bubbles. Oh my god, it can get the pulse racing, the heart racing, hopefully the bobbin racing as well. I'm on people. Let's try and keep it out of the way. Okay, I think I'll clear the weed. I've got the floodlight on as well. Probably can tune that down and then lose the fish. Watch this. Ambient lighting. There is Mr. Fish, Mr. Tench, nice looking fish. This one's a male, never was an old man owed a fish so badly. Brings back memories of some major, major Tench sessions years ago. And this is a bit, this is, this is, if he holds still, this is quite a big fish for a male Tench, if I can get him up and let him calm down. I've got him in a bit quick probably. I just see a couple roll and that was it. Happy days. I mean are they not a fantastic English fish? English summer evening I've got. All one day of it. Beautiful. It'll be very very hot tomorrow. So we're going to get this guy straight back. Just check him out. Chunky across the back. Traditional red eye gym as they say and a great big paddle of a tail. What a super fish. And there he goes. Straight away. They don't look very big in the water. I was just about to change over to worms and that was on three grains of sweet corn. And I was changing the other one over. Cast it, trying to get near some bubbles and it went into the weed. I thought, I'll leave it. No, don't leave it Graham, you're not happy with it. Cast it again and that's what I did. And as I was casting that one, the other uh, bobbin went up. Small fish on this time. And messing with the camera, he does that to me in the weeds. Another one lost where I'm filming. Well, the sweet corn's gone, but the ground bait is still there. See no fish cruising. Back to the bevy, I think. Yeah, no movement on these tiny little beeps, but nothing else. And I had a ball of ground bait down there. I think you can see that bit of it's left, and all the sweet corn is untouched. And of course, I'm attracting a million mosquitoes. I've got one 
on now. It's been a while, I can tell you. That's a little beepy. No. Lots of little takes I've missed. It's just small fish, I don't know what they are. This one was on worm. It's like half past two in the morning. I like tench fishing, but I, I really don't like all the small fish bites. All right, you'll get this. The oh, he's going well. The camera's fallen off the tripod. Lucky he didn't break the camera, but it's smashed a leg off the. Uh, Just snap the light so I can't get you great pictures. <coughs> there we go, boys. Actually, it's a pretty big tench. Nice fish, it's a fat one. Big old gob on it. Poor steady boy. So there we go, it's as good as we're gonna get, picture wise. I'm sorry there's a shade on the monitor, it's because the light's busted, but at least you can see. Let's just don't drop it. It's about as good as we're gonna get on the picture, people. Let's get him straight back. We'll probably gather by the attire that. It is the next morning. Do you know, I don't think I've ever had a night like that. Little tweaky bites and just nothing. I put enough bait in there, I don't think I overfed it. And just two tench, I mean, what can I say? Bang on season, maybe it's too hot. I don't think they've gone spawning again, I really don't. I don't know what it is. Sometimes, look, what happens, guys, is They'll go feeding on the tiny single grains of, and this is for all fish, of the ground bait. So if they were on that ground bait, then I've got no chance of getting them. They get what's called preoccupation with small pieces, small items of food. Just the way it is. I mean, I tried corn, I tried worm, I tried maggots. I tried sleeping. <laughs> no, no. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, 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 beep. Makes you wonder whether I should have been using a, a small mini. See, look, it's just a little perch like this, a small mini boilie. Anyway, it's the way it is. It's a beautiful morning. It's going to get very hot today. I think I'm going to start packing the delightful bivvy up. Quite cold last night. I, I mean, I had a body warmer and I had a, a hoodie on as well. I'll tell you what was bad news. A, putting the floodlight on for filming those fish was every insect known to man came to me. Which Les was telling me that he could get bitten alive there. And the other thing was stumbling around in the dark, kicking the tripod over and smashing the floodlight stalk so I can't put it on the camera. Hmm. It's been a good evening. Anyway, I'm just telling you this is how it goes fishing. I'm sure a lot of you out there know exactly the same. I'm just I'm pleased we've got two obviously but it's just I don't understand, and this is why we go fishing. It's because you never, just when you think you got it nailed, you haven't. Something's changed, the weather, the moon, what can we blame? Well, don't blame ourselves. So we'll see you in the next issue of Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Fingers crossed, if it's a nice session, I can put some fish in a net for you.
just as a close out and an addition, did you see when I threw this maggots in, just how fast those perch shoveled their way through everything? My goodness, maybe I haven't had enough bait out there. And these guys demolishing it. It just goes to show, as I'm packing up, I throw some maggots in down there. Boom, they're gone in a flash. Oh dear. Lesson learned a little bit late, Graham. In one of these swims that I looked in, I did get carp, about six, eight pounds, I think. And if you look down there, we had the ground bait, all cleaned out. I mean, there's only so much ground bait you can throw in, guys. There's that exactly many small perch in there. They just shovel their way through things like maggots and small worms. Oh well, back to the drawing board.